Hey, my name's Sandy Levesque. I've been a Zumba instructor for three years now, teaching in France. I'm in Nice here, and I want to share with you in this video a quick Zumba teacher training tip, which, when I started to apply it to my classes, really, really improved the quality of my classes and how much I enjoyed them, as well as my students. So, this tip is basically all to do with how you're teaching. And my question to you is, are you teaching for your students or are you teaching at your students? When you're dancing, when you're doing your new choreographies, are you really looking to see if your, your students are getting it? Or are you doing a bit more of like a star show and performing? Now, you might have heard this before, being talked about elsewhere, but I just wanted to show you my perspective so that you can see if it helps you in your classes, because I know that when I understood this, it really helped. So it's important to ask yourself that question because what happens a lot of the time is that when a new instructor starts out, you find yourself in front of a large crowd of people several times a week, and there can be this kind of default mechanism that kicks in where you want to just be like a big star. You know, like we live in a reality which is obsessed with stars, with celebrities, and it can be quite unconscious. You can suddenly find yourself really kind of dancing and performing. Whereas if you look at a good Zumba instructor and, and perhaps have a think about instructors that have inspired you or zesses that you've really liked, you'll notice something. They're all really good at cueing. Their main priority is to make sure that this class can follow. It's not to look good in front of the class. And I really challenge you to look at your classes and see how this applies because you might think, well, I'm, I'm there to be teaching. But sometimes you might think you're doing that, but actually you're really performing. So the way to tell about if you're doing that is to think about how you learn a new choreography. When you're learning, do you think about the cues you're going to be doing as you're learning the choreography? Do you learn where you're going to insert them into your moves? Is that like a, a one of the first things you do? Or is it something you do more kind of on the job? If you're doing it on the job, I would say your priority is not your students because there's just no way to clearly cue if you're just making it up and it's not consistent and it changes each time. I know because I've been there when I first started out I didn't really understand cueing very well and it was actually from my colleagues, from watching other instructors that I realized that cueing as part of your the way that you put a choreography together is massively important. It makes a huge difference. It'll also give you more confidence because what happens when you start to really cue well is that your students follow better and you notice that the overall level of your class improves. Otherwise, if they're just trying to keep up with you because you're just performing, they, they won't get it as fast and you'll see the difference. It's a little bit like if you're driving somewhere. If you just follow someone in a car, then it's going to be probably quite hard for you to find your way back unless you've got an amazing visual memory. If someone explains you like the main landmarks on the way there, then you're probably going to remember how to get there again, even if you're on your own. And it's the same with a choreography. Okay, so you want to make sure that just before you change move, about you know two seconds before, you stop the move you're doing and you, st you prepare your students for the next move and give them directions about where, which, where you're moving to, how many they're going to do with each steps, you know, whether they're turning around, whether to stay in one place. You'll find your own way of doing this. This isn't really about how to cue, this is more about the fact that cueing is important, okay? And the second part of this is eye contact. If you're teaching with your class, you'll notice that you constantly have eye contact with them. And not just kind of in a random way. Uh, I've really noticed the difference in my own teaching is that when I first started out, I'd have random eye contact, but quite often the whole class would blur into one because I was still in performer mode. And what happened is the more I started to really look at how to improve my teaching and I started to look my students in the eye, I made it a point to look at everyone at least once during the class. And it's amazing because you start to really build more connection with your students. Your class is more present because they're constantly looking to see if you're going to look at them. And you can encourage them, you know, if you see someone who's just got a complicated move, you can give them a little wink, a little ah, smile at them. Or if someone, you know, you know they love a song, you can give them a little you know, a look as you start the music and they'll know why you're doing that. And it really just adds to the magic of your class and it's so simple to do. 
and even if at first it's, it's a bit tricky, keep going with it because it does become easier and it really increases the, the quality of your class and you'll find that not only do your students enjoy it more because they feel more connected with you, but you'll enjoy it more because you've got that connection. And one last little tip is that sometimes, and I bet this happens to you as well, sometimes, let's be honest here, you don't always feel like teaching, you know? And what I found with the eye contact thing was that when I had a day when I was not totally in the mood, I would start to thank my students for being there one by one as I looked them in the eye. I'd just say in my head, I wouldn't obviously go, thank you, <laughs> but I'd just say thank you in my head. And what happened is that even though I wasn't saying it out loud, I know that the energy of the class started to change because I had an energy of gratitude. I was happy that everyone who'd come was there and the energy of the whole class started to change and my energy changed. So that's just another extra tip that I wanted to throw in there for you. Okay, so just to recap, the Zumba teacher training tip for this video is to ask yourself, am I performing at my class or am I teaching for my students? And to look at the way that you incorporate cueing and eye contact, okay? So if you got something out of this video, like it, share it with your instructor friends or whoever could benefit from this video and click on the link below if you'd like to receive more tips like this. Okay, thank you for watching and have a brilliant day and enjoy your classes.